Are solar panels really environmentally friendly? In this video, we're going to discuss whether or not the clean energy produced by solar panels offsets some of the downsides in the manufacturing process. Welcome to the Solar Energy Channel. Let's jump right into it. I'm Warren. And I'm Larry. So Larry, let's talk about, first of all, how solar panels work from an environmental perspective. So once they're on your roof, connected and working, you're good to go. The energy's clean, there's no fossil fuels, no emissions, you're all set at that point. So let's talk then about the manufacturing process because I think that there's some concern about uh, some of the downsides to clean energy from the manufacturing process of solar panels. So let's talk about the materials first. Yeah. So the, the materials involved in the process, first of all, you have your silicon uh, solar cells, a mix of crystalline silicon, either gallium or boron. Um, these cells are soldered together with, with uh, metal connectors that link the cells together. Um, and there's a back sheet, uh, typically that's plastic, at least that's what it had been in the past. Now with today's bifacial modules, oftentimes it's a glass back sheet. Okay. And you also have glass in the front, a metal frame, um, an encapsulate of some kind, like a plastic or a rubber typically, and then a copper wire out the back, uh, which pushes the power back out to your, your inverter. So we know that silicone is widely, widely and readily available. It's abundant. Uh, but how do we get it and turn it into silicone wafers? So typically what they do is manufacturers will use a, will process quartz at high temperatures. And one of the challenges with that is that this often releases sulfur dioxide and, and carbon dioxide as a byproduct while they're making the solar modules. So obviously it takes quite a bit of energy to do that. Where does the energy come from? So one of the things I want to note here initially is that there's a common misperception that a solar panel takes more electricity to produce it than what it can produce over its lifetime. And so it's kind of a net negative. Yeah. Um, what I'll say here initially is that in the process to produce a solar panel, the solar panel can produce that much energy in about four to eight months. Yeah. And it should be producing electricity for 25, 30, 40 plus years. So yeah. that, that should be a non-issue. Um, however, according to a report put out by the International Energy Agency in 2022, one of the things they noted is that about 80% of the energy used to produce a solar panel comes from electricity. And unfortunately, currently about 60% of that electricity comes from coal. Now, about 36% of our total electricity in the world comes from coal. So you might say, well, why does so much more of the solar manufacturing process come from coal than a typical uh, electricity users in the world. And the main reason for that right now is that China is the main producer of solar panels, of silicon, of wafers, that energy intensive piece that's needed to produce a solar panel. And China incidentally uses a lot of coal for their electricity. Now one of the things I'll note is that going forward, as we move more of that production of solar panels and cells and that type of thing to the U.S., where we use more natural gas for electricity, that should be helpful, you know, natural gas a little better for the environment than coal. And then also, as in the U.S., we have a path forward to get to a lot more renewables. Yeah. So as we get there and as we produce more in the U.S., that should take down the environmental toll that the production of solar panels has on the environment. Let's talk about the end of life of solar panels. What happens to them when they reach the end of their life? So according to the EPA's uh, website, most of the components in a solar panel can be recycled. Okay. About 75% of it is glass. Um, and there's other you know, components that can be easily recycled, like aluminum, copper, plastic, yep. et cetera. Then there's some materials that are a little bit more difficult to recycle. Uh, silver, there's very little of that in the panel. Um, some toxic metals like lead and cadmium. Yep. Um, but that's a very small portion of the panel. Now, as far as the other big components, inverters, racking, inverters are probably going to be recycled as electronic waste. Um, that's basically what they are, you know, electronics. And then racking, hopefully, will be able to be recycled uh, with scrap metals. So what about now, if you wanted to recycle your solar panel, where would you take it and how much would it cost? So according to a Yale report, about 90% yeah. of retired panels in the U.S. end up in, land, in landfills and landfills due to cost. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Um, an NREL report states that the cost is about between $15 and $45 to recycle a PV module in the U.S. and only $1 to 5 to put it in the landfill. So 
If you're going strictly on cost, you're going to go landfill. Um, hopefully, as we go along and as there's more demand for recycling solar panels, there'll be more viable options out there for that. And the reality is that most of the solar that's been installed in the last decade or so, which is the overwhelming majority of solar in this country, is nowhere near its, the end of its life. So the mm -hmm. demand really isn't there right now. But in 20 or 30 or 40 years from now, there'll be substantial demand and hopefully we'll see the industry as a whole catch up by then. In summary, solar panels create clean energy for years to come, decades to come, but there are some downsides to the manufacturing process, and it takes a solar panel on average between four to eight months to offset that, those downsides. Um, in terms of recycling solar panels, already the majority of the solar panels can be recycled. Uh, the cost hasn't come down yet because there isn't sufficient demand, but we're hoping that the industry as a whole catches up by the time that the majority of the solar panels are ready to be recycled. Um, if you have any thoughts or comments you'd like to share, feel free to leave a comment in the uh, comment section below.